Okay, so today we are going to continue with section five of the prerequisite chapter. And today we're going to multiply and divide rational expressions. So when we multiply and divide rational expressions, we're going to factor each part of the fraction. We may have to factor the numerator, the denominator. You may have to factor more than one part. So um, that's what we're gonna do today. And then for multiplying, then what we'll do is just like you did in fourth grade where we're gonna cross simplify, we're gonna be doing that. Now, in addition to being able to simplify diagonally, you can also simplify top to bottom. You just can't simplify side to side. All right, so um, someone just asked me about the homework. Um, again, I still have a few students who can't get into WebAssign, so the homework that you're still doing is just gonna be the PDF. So the homework you're still doing is just the PDF until I can get everyone to have their WebAssign accounts created. All right. So when we divide fractions, um, remember you're gonna do like a keep flip change or a stay change change, however you wanna you know, memorize that. Pretty good on that. All right, everybody good? You can still see it? Everybody done copying down what's on here? All right, let's go on. Let's try some examples. So then the rest of the notes are just examples. So first step is to check each section, the numerator and the denominator of all your fractions, and see which ones can be factored. So the only part that I need to factor is the top, this numerator. And this is the difference of two squares. So I'm gonna just go ahead and rewrite the first fraction and again, remember these are grouped together. And then now what I'm gonna do is factor the x squared minus nine, and it becomes x plus three, x minus three. And then the x plus four is still at the bottom. Now I need to look for things that I can simplify. You can't simplify side to side, but you can simplify top to bottom or diagonally. So I'm gonna look for something that looks exactly the same. I have an x plus three down here in the bottom, and I'm gonna match it with one in the top. These become ones, and now there's nothing else left that I can simplify. Now I'm not foiling or anything here. I'm just gonna go ahead and write my answer, and I'm leaving them in factored form in the binomials here. Nothing else can be simplified, I can't try to reduce the two and the four or an X and an X because again, remember they're attached. Next one, again, the same thing. I only have one piece that I need to factor and that's the top of the fraction now. So again, it's gonna factor into the same thing. It's the difference of two squares. So I'm gonna make this X plus three x minus three, and now I'm gonna rewrite the rest of the problem. So I'm just rewriting the denominator, nothing to factor, this denominator, this numerator. Now I'm gonna look for things to simplify. Notice I have an x plus three here, and I can simplify top to bottom, so one in the top, one in the bottom. Remember, anything divided by itself is one, and then now I'll look for an x minus three and an x minus three. And now the only thing that's left is the x plus four. And I'm done. Next slide, more examples. Oh boy, look at this. We've got four things we need to factor here. So we got a lot of work on this one. So um, again, if you'd rather do it off to the side, wherever you wanna do it. So let me go ahead and take a look at this first one. 
I'm going to factor this. So if you want to write the problem up at the top or over to the side, wherever you want to write it. Now, if you're good at guessing and testing, what you can do here is look at 2x. The only way to multiply to get a 2x is 2x times x. And then if I look at the negative 6, the only way that I'm going to multiply to get a negative 6 would be either 1 and 6, and then one of my numbers needs to be negative, or 2 and 3. So it's actually going to be 2 and 3. And then once you do the guess and test, you would have to FOIL this. Now, if you're not good at guessing and testing, I'm going to go ahead and also do this one, show you how to do it by grouping. And this is how I did it when I did it in the P4. Remember, when you do grouping, you're going to multiply, and you get negative 12x squared. So I'm looking for the two numbers that multiply to give me that, but who add to give me a single x. Whenever I'm looking for a 1x or a negative 1x, this tells me the two numbers I'm looking for are the ones that are going to be right next to each other. So the numbers I'm going to be using are 3x and 4x. My middle sign was positive, so that tells me the 3x will be the negative. So then now what I do is I take, now that I did that, let me erase this. So now I'm replacing the middle with those two factors I just found. So rewrite the 2x squared, replace I could either put the 4 or the 3 first, it doesn't matter, and then rewrite the negative 6. Now, if you already came up with this, you don't need to go through this whole process. Some of you are going to be better at factoring than others, and you won't need to do this whole process. Some will be good at guessing and testing when the numbers are really small. So when you do the grouping, remember you make the two groups. Look for the GCF. Look for GCF of green, it's going to be 2x. And now put these two together. It's not going to be 2x, it's just going to be a 2. And then put those two together, and then put the thing that was in common. And that's the same answer that I got when I guess and tested. So now my new numerator, after I factor it, is 2x minus 3 and x plus 2. I now need to factor this denominator. This is an easy trinomial, so all I need to do is focus on the negative 5. So the factors of negative 5 that give me positive 4, it's going to be positive 5 and negative 1. Then I'll come over here. For this one, I'm going to do a GCF. So if I take x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x, so I'm doing this one, first pull out a GCF. Now I have to look to see, can I still factor this? And again, this is an easy trinomial. I'm looking for factors of 2 that give me negative 3. So when it's a positive on the end, that tells me my signs are the same. So it's going to be negative 2 times negative 1. That's the new numerator. And now for the denominator, I'm just going to pull out a GCF. So I can pull out a GCF of 2x, and then I'm left with 2x minus 3. Now I have the entire problem factored. Now I go back and look for things to simplify before I multiply. So notice I have a 2x minus 3 and a 2x minus 3. I'm doing it diagonally, one top, one bottom. Then I also have an x minus 1 here and an x minus 1 here. Um, I can also do the x's. So I have an x here and an x here nothing else left to simplify so final answer here is going to be x plus 2 x minus 2 over 2 times x plus 5 so 
So this is what remained. I had this, 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 and this. So when you're doing all this, you really need to be neat or you're gonna end up missing something. So that's the final answer there. I don't foil, I don't distribute, I leave it just like that. Now the next one's pretty simple. Nothing to factor. I just need to look for things to simplify. So let me go ahead and rewrite that. So five over x minus one times x minus one over 25 times x minus two. So again, I'm gonna look for things to simplify. I can simplify the x minus one with an x minus one, and then I can also simplify the five and the 25. And now I'm gonna multiply what remains. Notice when I simplified, I left a one behind. So one times one in the numerator, and then five times x minus two. So don't forget that when you're simplifying, it's not disappearing, you're dividing it so it's leaving behind a one. Let's do a few more examples and then we're done. So for this one, I've got three different things that I need to factor. So for the top numerator here, I need to factor this. This is an easy trinomial, so I can just set it up like this. Factors of x squared are x and x. Factors of negative six that give me negative one. Again, that's a clue that they should be side by side. So negative three, positive two. Then I need to do the denominator. This is a perfect square trinomial, and it's x plus three times x plus three. And then this one over here is the difference of two squares. So this will turn into x minus two, x plus two. So let me go ahead and rewrite everything now. So my new numerator is this. My new denominator, x plus three, x plus three. And then over here, this didn't change. And then this one factored, it was the difference of two squares. Now I go back and I need to find things that are going to simplify. So I can match an x plus three and an x plus three. I also have an x minus two, nope, x plus two, and an x plus two, and nothing else to simplify. So now I'll multiply what remains. An x minus three was left in the top, and then an x plus three, and an x minus two. Now, don't be tempted to try to simplify these two and think it turns into negative one. That only works when your signs are opposite. So if I had something that looked like this, that would simplify to a negative one. But the way that it's written now in our answer, nothing else simplifies. I can't simplify the x's and then the threes. I'm done. The next one is, the next four examples are division. We're gonna do exactly the same thing, except we're gonna do a key flip change. Now, I like to do a key flip change before I even begin so I don't forget. Because sometimes when I get into the problem and then I start factoring and then I forget to flip my fraction. So I'm gonna do a keep flip change or a stay change change, whatever you, however you wanna memorize it for division. So I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite. So my first fraction stays the same. I'm going to change the division to multiplication, and then I'm gonna flip my fraction upside down. Pretty good. Now I have to start factoring. 
Notice I got two cube patterns here. So we're thinking soap here. So for the numerator, I'm going to cube root the x, cube root the eight, same sign, square the x, opposite sign, square the two. Now I'm gonna do the denominator. It's the difference of two squares. So this will be x plus two, x minus two. Over here, I now have a perfect cube. So I'm going to again do soap. So x plus two, x squared opposite sign, and then square the two. The denominator cannot be factored, so I'm just gonna rewrite it. There are no factors of four that will add or subtract to give me a two. Now that everything, I'm sorry? You can't just square root x and four? Okay, so if I do that, I get 2x, but then remember you have to double it to check, check to see if it goes to the middle. Does that make sense? So at first glance, you're thinking, oh, it's a perfect square trinomial. But if you do that, if you square root this and square root this, then we get this, and you would think it's a binomial squared. But when I FOIL this, I'm going to get x plus x squared plus 4x plus 4. And it's not going to give me a 2 in the middle. So that's why you always have to check that trick. Anybody good on that? All right, so that one can't be factored. So now I'm going to look for things to simplify. So I have this whole big trinomial. It'll cancel there. And then I have an x minus 2 and an x minus 2. And then diagonally, I've got an x plus 2 and an x plus 2. So now the only thing that's left is this. So my final answer here is x squared minus 2x plus 4. Three more examples, same thing, division, keep change flip. So let's try those last three. Again, I'm going to go ahead and flip my fraction. So let's see, let me write it over here. Keep the first fraction the same, change the division to multiplication, and now flip the fraction upside down. Now I need to start my factoring process. Here's the cube again. So it's going to become x minus 1, x squared plus 2 times x plus 1 squared, or plus 1, because 1 squared is 1. Then the denominator is the difference of two squares. So this will become x plus 1 x minus 1. And again, the order doesn't matter how you write that. Then the next one, this numerator, this is a perfect square trinomial. So I can factor this, and this turns into x plus 1, x plus 1. And then the denominator, it cannot be factored, so I'm just going to rewrite it. Now I look for things to simplify. So I can cancel this huge, did I do that wrong? Is it for, when I'm, you do the soap, aren't you supposed to do just one times x? Yes, thank you, I need to fix that. So this is just one x. So this cancels, and then I can cancel, a neg x minus 1, x minus 1, 
and then I can cancel x plus 1, x plus 1. And now finally, my whole answer after all of this is just x plus 1. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my keep change flip first. x over x minus 1, change the multiplication, flip upside down. So now only one thing I need to factor, and that's that x squared minus 1. So I'm going to factor this and make it x plus 1, x minus 1. Now if you want to factor the x squared and show that this is x times x, you can do that, but you don't have to. And now I'll look for things to simplify. So I can simplify the x minus 1. I can also simplify one of the x's. And now my final answer here is x plus 1 over x. I cannot cancel the x because that numerator, the x plus 1, is attached. In our last example, we have to factor three things. I'm going to first do a keep flip change. Keep the first fraction the same. Change the division to multiplication. And now I'm going to start factoring. So the top of the fraction, this is actually a perfect square trinomial. So when I factor it, it's x minus 7 and x minus 7. The denominator is the difference of two squares, and that will factor into x plus 7, x minus 7. When you put x minus 7 and x minus 7, you're just writing out like x minus 7 squared, right? For the red? Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. Okay. All right, then the top I didn't need to factor, so rewrite it. And then the denominator, I can factor out a GCF of 3. Now I look for things to simplify. So I can simplify the x minus 7, and it doesn't matter which one I choose. Now you can't go side to side here, but I could still do the one that's right on top of it. So I can do this one and this one. And then I'll do this x plus 7, this x plus 7. So now the only thing that's left is this 3. Now remember, when we've simplified all these, 1's remain. So my final answer here is 1 third. So again, try to be neat. Remember when you're canceling, a 1 is left behind. Um, don't think it just ends up being a three, the answer is actually one-third.